Hello to everybody. And I feel so sorry that I can't physically uh, be there and meet with you this time. But I do hope we have the chance uh, to, to reconnect at some point in Brussels or Helsinki in the future. Because if I'm really convinced and excited of something, then I'm convinced and excited about science-based politics in the EU in the future. And I've been sort of getting a positive response, both for, from the uh, uh, vice chair, the members of the commission to come, and uh, from the uh, president of the commission, Ursula van der Leyen, about uh, the model of getting better uh, placed science-based politics uh, in the EU. And the initial model I've been, uh, I've been talking to some of you and trying to advance with this kind of a thing, 2030. It is a gathering of think tanks uh, for sustainability in the Europe. Is that we could actually uh, co <clears throat> connect together with uh, Sami, Sapea, and of course including Leru and Isaac and all these bodies. A, this kind of a in international independent science panel in Europe that uh, could act as a benchmark towards the politics. It could choose itself what topics to take, be it social or environmental topics, sustainability in broader sense, or economic uh, issues, and to see what have been the uh, impacts of the politics, and what are the upcoming challenges, and are the politics getting to the goal and are the politics addict. And this is very, very uh, crucial, as you know, especially in climate change, resource efficiency, and in other, some other fields where we are actually facing a system-based uh, 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 problem where you have a great uh, interaction and synergies between many negative phenomena and where the negative developments are hugely and drastically uh, uh, exponential. And this is very hard for politicians quite often to grasp and to make adequate politics. So we sort of underachieve under the, uh, the, the industry lobbies always uh, when it comes to LULUCFs, REDS, energy efficiency, um, uh, CO2 emissions from transportation, or you name it. And as you know better than I do, we are running out of the time and out of our climate CO2 budgets if we want to uh, keep this planet um, uh, livable. That then would actually mean understanding the system impact, creating better and more information about the system impact, and then judging the proposals by backcasting method. Are we really getting up to the uh, worsening problems level with these actions. And quite often we are limited in, in silo linear solutions like uh, only cutting the emissions uh, of the new uh, uh, diesel cars by 2030. When you would need to get out of the box and think, okay, such an increase in population, in urban density, in cars, in rush hours, is actually a bigger cost. It's going to mean a huge substantial increase in emissions. Oh, then again, our forecasts are telling that uh, the flying could be even up to tenfold by 2050. Our airports, transport systems, climate, nothing is going to sustain that. And you would need to see the real scale of the challenge and them actually happening simultaneously in uh, car transportation, in uh, tourism, in flight traffic, in use of textiles, in construction and you name it. And then actually what we would need to do, and I usually call it this kind of a train for the marathon, instead of just walking a bit more effectively, get a personal train. And this science panel would be this personal train of the politics telling what needs to be done and how to start to get out of the box and on the right uh, solution. And as you know, then you just don't walk more. You do quite a lot of 
other stuff like eat differently and sleep differently and uh, go to gym to get a bit more muscles and run fast and slow and all that. And if we don't take that kind of a science uh, in, uh, information and advice seriously, I'm, I'm really so worried about that our social network systems, our economies and our environments are in serious uh, threat and danger at the moment. Okay. Uh, science, not only climate, but all elements, all environmental elements and all uh, social elements and governance elements. And then the backcasting. And the last but not the least, calculate always in the cost of non-action. Otherwise we are always stuck on the debate how costly it is to get in refugees or educate people or uh, improve our diesel cars. And no one is actually having the eye on the ball. What is the costs of non-action when it hits uh, to food, to health, to aging populations, to economic, uh, 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 economic growth, all these actors. And I'm quite convinced that you could create the model how to create that kind of a science panel, how to choose the topics and uh, law bills to uh, evaluate and how to create that kind of a network uh, with the commissioners, commission, civil servants, parliamentarians and with the council and that matter in the national level because we have our own bodies, you have your own bodies there so that the member states and their national interest would take this into account also. Once again, thank you and uh, I hope to keep in touch with you and hopefully you send your thoughts uh, about this science, uh, science uh, advice in the Europe uh, and what are your suggestions and, and your actions and if I can be of any support of that, I'm more than happy to do it.